to travel and to raise money and um, so forth. Yeah, yeah, and it, they certainly did a lot of that, which which yep. belies, you know, the difficulty they must have had to mm -hmm. to raise funds, to travel for places places to stay, to print documents, mm -hmm. reports, speeches, and so on, um, in in what was referred to by John Stuart Mill as organized agitation. <laughs> yes, I like John Stuart Mill. I, I'm glad you know him. He was one of my husband. My husband taught philosophy and. He's one of our favorite people. And he hmm. also was a politician, you know. He was a member of parliament. Uh, and too many academicians just dismiss active politics. Uh, uh, they, they have ideals, but hmm. they don't work for those ideals. So that's an, another theme that I try to um, emphasize, that Politics is no more dirty than you allow it to be. And uh, both John Stuart Mill and Bertrand Russell were members of Parliament. Uh, and we need more thinking people in government, especially now. <laughs> mm, for sure. Yeah, well, yeah, in, indeed, exactly. And, and I suspect that, you know, it's how the system is set up um, that sort of screens out better candidates they figure they can work better outside the system than within the system which is you know do you find that's still the case with women and and the ongoing issues that um, we're facing just in terms of including everyone it's getting a whole lot better getting a whole lot better but again it didn't happen by accident uh it didn't happen because anybody gave it to you it happened because women had the courage to to run and to govern and uh, uh, accept the, the scorn that many, many people um, laid on them. Another thing that's interesting that people don't understand now is uh, that the West back then was much more liberal than the East. And the, the first women elected to a state legislature were in Colorado in 1893. Uh, the first woman elected to a state senate was in Utah just a few years later, and she was a Mormon and the wife of a polygamist. Uh, that was a surprise. In, yes, yeah. But she, uh, it, Mormon women at that time were encouraged to be self-supporting and um, uh, encouraged to encourage other women in careers. So uh, the Mormons had sent her, Mormon women had sent her um, to college in Pennsylvania and Michigan, and she came back and founded the first hospital in Salt Lake City. Uh, and um, then when Utah women got the right to vote already in 1870 in, in that territory, it was another... Uh, the first was Wyoming in 1869, and it was just a few weeks later in Utah. And this was clearly a recruiting tool to get women to come to these remote settlements. Uh, anyway, um, the, the West continued to set those precedents. Uh, the first women on juries were in Wyoming. Wyoming elected the first female governor. Uh, and the East, meanwhile, we, we think of, of uh, the East as being liberal today, but it's not so much, actually, if you look at it. Uh, New York has yet to elect a woman as, as governor, uh, has yet to elect a woman as mayor of New York City, and um, we, we, we don't really think about the facts. We, we accept um, labels without thinking about the facts. Mm, indeed, indeed. You know, one of the things that was also interesting to me is how <clears throat> even though it was Seneca Falls and the women based in the new United States that kicked off voting and suffrage for women, Europe who learned from the Americans mm -hmm. ratified suffrage sooner. And the, mm -hmm. you know, you pointed out tend to be more homogenous states 
where yeah yeah uh, but it's also yeah. issue diverse mentioned yes. earlier Donna? the suffrage was tied in initially with abolition Donna? it got tied uh, in with prohibition Donna? Because of yeah. the Quaker involvement, there was, um, you know, uh, the ideas about roles of women and, and temperance. Um, former slaves, when that came up after World War II, Native Americans, tensions between territories and states. So many things were happening at once and all linked. Yep. Donna? Yep. Which is why it should be taught as part of all of history. It's not Donna? a separate thing. Uh, and uh, European nations are simpler. They, they sent their uh, adventurous types to America. And um, so immigration was a huge issue uh, along with the, the, the feminist movement uh, and especially prohibition. I mean, the Europeans couldn't understand at all the idea of prohibition. Um, so these, these right. things made it, made yeah, made a much more complex movement here, and and easier for them to. Uh, uh, Australia probably is the best example that it it replicated the uh, early Western territories, uh, Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, and so forth, who gave women rights back in the 19th century, uh, voting rights, and and. It was because they were a frontier, and they, the men wanted to attract women. Uh, the ratio of men to women in Wyoming at the beginning of the territory was 50 to 1. So at their very first territorial meeting of the legislature, they um, they proposed giving women complete voting rights and complete equality in employment. Uh, so Australia, being a similar frontier a little bit later, did the same thing, and uh, frontier societies always have been more liberal. It's after you become ossified and class-ridden um, that the conservatism takes over. Hmm. Very interesting. Yeah, and there was also, of course, the Mormon issue in Utah, where I understand from your book that on one hand the Mormon males at first supported women's suffrage because they wanted, they expected that the women would sort of let them control <laughs> how they voted. Yeah, yeah, also yeah. I'll override the, the rabble rousing people who came out West for, um, you know, gold digging and other, other means. Yeah. Yeah. You had a real contrast of characters there in the West of the, the traditional cowboy sort and the Mormons who were very much puritanical. You know, mm -hmm. except for polygamy, they uh, uh, they didn't drink alcohol. They didn't even drink coffee. Um, they um, a, a real contrast to the saloon society. So, uh, yes, the Mormon men definitely encouraged women to vote at first because they wanted to outvote these guys. Uh, but they gave it up. That when they wanted to be admitted to the United States, Congress wouldn't accept um, uh, either polygamy or women as voters. And so for they ha women in Utah had the vote for 17 years, and then they lost it. Uh, mm -hmm. Wyoming, and that was not yeah, Wy uh, Wyoming, that was not the case. The Wyoming men stuck with women the whole way and uh, refused to give up the... Um, their rights. Uh, so, so it seems like this back and forth thing, when you thought you had a legislative victory and then it was re repealed, is part of the whole story. And that's why we have to stay vigilant today. So, Doris, this is an incredible uh, story, Victory for the Vote, the fight for women's suffrage, and the century that follows, which we are still living in. So if people want to get a hold of you or get a hold of the book, um, how do you suggest they do that? Uh, just Google my name, uh, Doris Weatherford, W-E-A-T-H-E-R-F-O-R-D. And when you Google it, my Authors Guild website will come up. And uh, on the last page of that website, there is an email address and even a phone number. Fantastic. And you also can email her, Doris directly at doris at 
D for Doris, dweatherford.com. So just to wrap things up, any final words? Um, maybe applicable to well, applying what, the past to the things, Yeah, one of the things I haven't really spelled out, I've kind of indicated it, but haven't really spelled out, is that women's rights and so-called states' rights have been in conflict from the beginning. You could inherit property perhaps in New York. You couldn't inherit property in in uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, you could vote in Wyoming, but not next door in Nebraska uh, or whatever. Uh, women have lost rights when they merely move a few miles. That's something that never happens to men in a realistic way. And women need to think about that in terms of reproductive rights. Uh, we we have forgotten how recently even birth control was legal. Exactly. Uh, yes, mm-hmm. it was. It was not until 1968 that um, uh, birth control. In Connecticut, you had to prove that you were married to buy birth control pills until 1968. And in Massachusetts, uh, you couldn't buy them at all until 1972. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, you know, abortion is a different issue, but it's basically the same thing as birth control. It's taking control of your life. And um, if we go backwards on Roe versus Wade, women who live in states where there will be state legislatures that will completely outlaw abortion and women will have to travel. Uh, uh, And we need to think much more carefully about the conflict between a so-called state's rights and a person's rights. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. And um, let's hope that um, your book is really, I mean, it's not even Kindle. You've got flaming logs <laughs> on the campfire <laughs> of, um, you know, possibility of what's yet to come. But we, you know, acknowledge and credit the the fighters, the not and, you know, all the fighters, the females and males and all diverse groups that um, support Um, equal rights for everyone, frankly, if you're in this country of America, based on what we were designed for. And you finished with there, you started with a foreword of your recent edition by Nancy Pelosi, where she talks about empowering the next generation of history makers and game changers. So I want to thank you, Doris, for being such a history maker and game changer, not just with this book, but your whole life, your whole career coupled with your husband and your daughter now as well. So thank you so much. We're grateful you uh, spent some time with us here today. Thank you. I enjoyed it. Wonderful. And I want to thank our listeners as well for tuning into the SOB Radio Network, standing for Smart, Open, and Brave uh, Women, as were the suffragettes (laughs) and those who continue uh, to uh, rattle the cage and, and bring equality in this, this very day and age. So uh, thanks for being with us here today. And do remember, the life you live is the legacy you leave. Bye-bye now.